So I've been evolving this tool for many years now, and it has reached a new level. So let's just jump right into it. Open up your browser, type dbloat Windows 10 in Google. You'll see this is the first hit, takes you right to my website. Right here, we're gonna just copy this command and we're gonna launch and I'm gonna show you the new revamp of this tool, which is pretty darn amazing. Paste it in. You can just hit right click to paste anything that's in your, your clipboard. Uh, I guess I did not click that enough. Click, click, all right, there we go. And paste. And this should launch into the tool. Pull this up. And here is this expanded tool. Now, I will notice I, I have I put a bunch more install utilities here. I've removed a couple things and added things that I do on every install. That makes it very easy. I also add a little current status little thing just for a abbreviated version of when we install something. Like if you're gonna install Etcher, it'll tell you, hey, it's installing Etcher in the background here, please wait. And then it'll go through and install everything. Uh, a couple bug fixes from the last iteration of this tool. Uh, Winget now installs through the Microsoft Store. Uh, it doesn't actually launch the store or anything, so if you wanna install the Microsoft Store, It'll still install Winget, but it, it should make it much more reliable. There was some issues with installing tools on different versions of Windows. Uh, I think 21H1 and some of the recent versions of Windows 10 were having issues. Windows 11, which is what I'm on, obviously it comes with Winget baked in, so you don't even have to worry about it. It's just there. So then we have all these utilities. Pick anything, click it, and it'll say, hey, ready for Nest Task. You can install whatever you want. Essential tweaks, this is everything I do with every install. Anytime there's a major update on my system, I usually just come back in, click essential tweaks. If it does something really bad, you can always restore from a restore point as it makes that in the background, or you can just click undo. Undo is what you should do first if it does something you don't like, but for the most part, these are the most sane settings that I think pretty much everybody should do couple other things I like to do, but a lot of people don't, and that's disable Action Center. You'll notice I do not have an Action Center or this notification thing. I hate notifications. Uh, I always, I never tell anybody to ring the bell or, or do notifications just because I hate them, uh, even though I know that's to my own channel's detriment. So yeah, I guess if you don't mind notifications, click the bell down below. But either way, then we got dark mode, light mode which that's just the theming of Windows, show and hide icons. Most people will want hide icons. That's what I'm on right now. But let's say you wanted to see all of these icons and they want this whole taskbar to fill up. You just hit show icons right here and then on reboot, it'll do that. Uh, a couple adjustments. I normally would just do basic visual FX, I think was what it used to be called here. Now, a lot of people want just a performance at any cost. If you hit performance FX, it'll actually tweak windows to where it'll remove some of the effects. You see how the window's not moving, it just kind of shows you the outline. It gives you this basic effect, and that's kind of what that does. If you want more of an appearance FX, you click that, and it'll set everything to be more visual based, and uh, I think you should see it like from some opacity in windows and other things. I think uh, this one kind of shows it, but that's the difference between appearance and per performance. If you're on like a really low end system, I do recommend doing performance, but let's say it makes tweaks that you don't like and you're like, oh, hey, I want this window movement when I minimize or whatever it might be, it'll remove some window animation. You might want to switch back to appearance. Allow and disable background apps, these things. Disabling background apps will probably break some Windows apps. Uh, so a good thing, I don't recommend disabling background apps unless you really hate the Microsoft Store and you don't have anything from the Microsoft Store installed on your PC. By all means, do that. Uh, delete and disable OneDrive. I, I kind of wanted to rename this because some people have things in their OneDrive and they don't sync up their OneDrive. I think a couple people had some stuff deleted. Uh, from uninstalling and removing OneDrive because it removes the OneDrive folder. So don't do this if you use OneDrive or you have things in your OneDrive folder. I didn't think I needed to say that, but I was wrong. I need to say that because people are dumb. 
And then <laughs> we got uh, the Cortana in search. I don't recommend disabling Cortana in search as that's going to mess with some people's search capabilities. The big thing here is the ability to search, like, let's say, handbrake or whatever. It will break that ability. I don't recommend it, but some people are minimalists and wanted that function. Uh, I do disable by default location tracking, clipboard history, uh, hibernation. These three things are some things people have asked for, like location tracking for a Maps app if you're on like a laptop or something. Clipboard history, a lot of people want to know what they've copied and pasted. I view it as a security vulnerability, so I disable it by default, but some people like clipboard history. Hibernation, I think, is just a terrible thing. I always disable hibernation, and my essential tweaks also disables hibernation. I think it's just garbage. Shut down your PC, relaunch it. I, I just don't believe in it. So that's why that's there. And then this last one is something that's I kind of added as well that's new, and that's set time to UTC. Uh, Windows, by default, is set to local time, and it's... Not uh, it's it's not done properly. Microsoft has no reason to do local time. I think back in like the Y two K era when they initially made this decision, local time was used to help prevent some kind of uh, Y two K bug or something. I think that was like the original justification behind it. But every system, networking uh, to Unix based systems like Mac or Linux. All of them use UTC, and if you ever do any kind of dual booting, set this to UTC time, uh, so it's not going to be way off. Like right now, it's it's way off. I think I I just changed this, so I'm going to actually adjust the time here, and we're going to just change this to uh, the proper time. And I could actually set the time automatically. That probably would have been a little bit better but that'll set the time to the proper one. Because I dual boot, and if you don't set this to UTC, your time's always going to be about six hours off or seven hours during daylight savings time like now. And this right here, remove Microsoft apps. I don't recommend it, but I put it in there because a lot of people don't like the store apps and they want to remove everything from the MS store or Microsoft store. Doing this typically does break some things. Certain games, like let's say you have a lot of games installed through the Microsoft Store, it's going to delete them. Apps, like let's say I have a WSL on here, it's going to delete that. If you do sys prep work and you make custom images, it's going to basically break that. So I don't recommend doing this, but for those out there that want a more minimal uh, Windows and you don't like the Microsoft Store and you don't use anything in it, you can click it. But again, not recommended. A uh, couple things here. I've changed this section to troubleshoot as I'm going to be adding to this. I want to add one-click fixes for folks. Uh, much like the Windows troubleshooters, we have the phone app fix where sometimes your your phone... Well, I think I have it on this one. Like your phone... Yeah, this app right here sometimes breaks when you do some like essential tweaks or whatever it might be, or let's say you disable background apps that will also break your phone app. This kind of goes through and says, hey, for you guys that do use your phone, this will fix everything. It goes through and does all the checks and says, hey, uh, background apps are enabled and then it'll fix it all for you. Another thing I've added is Windows Update Reset. Many times people go to disable their Windows updates or actually have updates hang. A lot of times feature updates, especially I think it was 20H1, had a lot of issues with updating. And I've had a lot of systems that I was working on where I needed to update Windows. And then all of a sudden there's like an old junked up update that broke everything. So that's uh, something that uh, can fix Windows Update. What it does is it disables bit service, Windows Update service, all of it, and then clears out the entire software distribution folder and then cleans up anything and re-registers all the Windows Update DLLs and then re-enables all the services and then you can run your updates. It'll literally just clear everything out. It's basically uh, what Microsoft should do, but they refuse to or, or just don't even read their own TechNet forms because there's other professionals that have created this script and this is not coded by me. I basically just took something off of TechNet and put it into Windows Update up here. So if you have a stuck update or there's a problem with Windows Update, 
click this, it'll reset, it'll blow out any downloaded updates, and then you just restart your computer and your updates should work normally. Speaking of Windows updates, I never disable updates. People always ask me, how do I disable Windows updates? And I'm like, don't run Windows. <laughs> <laughs> because disabling updates can be very, very bad as you can be exploited and there's a lot of security vulnerabilities with that. Having said that, I think it's insane how Microsoft does their update systems. So the default settings I do not like and I do not recommend. So I made this button said security updates only. This blocks all feature updates. So let's say you're on like 20 or uh, 2004. And right now I think right at this instant is like 21 H2. It's like four different feature updates ahead of it. You can actually set this and it will basically block feature updates for about three years, meaning you're not gonna get any major feature updates and it's gonna be a lot more of a stable experience. Also, it blocks or delays uh, security updates for four days. Microsoft always releases updates on Tuesday. This delays it four days to where you can just do your security updates on a Saturday because that's what we do in business. I highly recommend everybody doing this. And then it also sets the maximum active time to be between your local time, whatever that is. It'll be between 2 a.m. and 8 a.m. is the only time it can run updates. So you have to leave your computer on, but this also should prevent it uh, most people aren't going to be awake between 2 and 8 a.m. Uh, and, and be on their computer. Well, and if you are, you can set your own active time because this isn't like hard-coded or anything. It just adds a registry entry. And that is it for this. I did add some also videos to teach people other things. Uh, on a live stream I did just the other day, I accidentally deleted the Windows bootloader and the entire partition that had uh, what booted Windows. And I click this. This will actually launch your default browser. And <laughs> it'll have me here. And it'll walk you through how to actually fix Windows 10 startup, the whole system reserve partition, how to rebuild it from scratch. And you can get your system working. That was one video that I think a lot of people have said thank you for, and they said this is great. So if you ever mess up your reserve partition or you need to re reload your Windows bootloader, that's one way you can do it. Cleaning viruses is another thing I get asked a lot. This actually goes over Tronscript. It's another video. And then creating your own custom ISO. So you don't necessarily have to do all these tweaks. I still recommend it whenever you launch into a new system or you have a major update. I still recommend coming back here and just clicking essential tweaks. But a lot of people want their own custom ISO that uh, kind of fixes everything. And this is another video walking you through how to build your own ISO because I can install Windows 10 in under five minutes with a custom ISO because it's just removes all that bloat that you don't need on startup. And this is the update to this script. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below, and I'll see you in the next one.